Thank you, Mr. Prakash. Now may I request Dr. Perrin to make a presentation on the gas being of Mozambique Channel. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Good morning to everybody. And uh, all my congratulations to the NMF for the excellent organization of this uh, 2023 edition of this uh, dialogue. So let's speak about Africa. And uh, let's also speak about Europe. What is the link, as far as gas is concerned, the link is clear, the war in Ukraine, of course. You will remember that uh, during the spring last year, the European Union took an historical decision. We will get rid of all fossil fuels coming from Russia, which means oil, coal, and natural gas. When you take such a decision, it means obviously that you will have to search for oil and gas and coal supplies throughout the world. And Africa, of course, has a role to play in this context. So my topic is about the gas discoveries uh, in and around the Mozambique Channel. Um, strictly speaking, Mozambique Channel means of course, Mozambique, Madagascar, the Comoros Islands, and some small islands between Mozambique and Madagascar. But if we have a broader look around the Mozambique Channel, we may add Tanzania in the, in the north, the Seychelles, South Africa on the south, and Mauritius. Um, among these countries, as far as gas is concerned, there are three countries which are relevant to my topic of today. Mozambique, Tanzania, and South Africa, in decreasing order. Why? Because in the other countries, quoted, we have not found natural gas as of today. It does not mean that we will never find natural gas. It's the exploration, the risk of exploration. But as of today, it's in these three countries that substantial and sometimes very large gas discoveries have been made offshore. So I will focus on these three countries, and in fact, mainly on two countries, Mozambique and Tanzania, why? Um, in South Africa, offshore South Africa, gas was discovered by the French group Total Energies. Um, two discoveries of gas and condensate offshore South Africa. But South Africa needs a lot of gas for its power system, for its industry, and it's very likely that this gas will be um, uh, consumed in South Africa. So it will not be part of international trade. So I will focus on Mozambique and Tanzania because these countries are and will be gas producers and exporters. First Mozambique, then Tanzania. As far as Mozambique is concerned, Thanks to this facility you have on, on the screen, it was, of course, very important for this country, which had no gas and oil historical record. So this is a floating LNG facility for this Coral Soul project. Um, it's a, quite a, a big project, about $8 billion as far as its investment cost is concerned. So in production since last November. And uh, you see on this slide uh, the consortium uh, of six companies. And in fact, you have two levels. You have three leaders, ENI of Italy, ExxonMobil of the US, of course, and the China National Petroleum Corporation. 
And after, you have the second level of three other companies, which have smaller stakes and smaller responsibilities in the conduct of the technical operations. ENH is the national oil and gas company of Mozambique. Kogas, it's South Korea. Uh, Galt, uh, Portugal. So there is one LNG project which is working since the end of last year in Mozambique. But it's only the beginning of the LNG story in this country. Because in Mozambique, you have three other LNG exports which are on the table. Um, the second one will be another FLNG unit, which will be called Coral Norte, Coral North. And after, you will have two larger LNG projects onshore, Rovuma LNG and Mozambique LNG. Let us begin by Mozambique LNG. Uh, the, the operator is Total Energy of, of France. Um, it's um, 20 billion dollars investment cost for phase one only, not the total cost of the project. Um, the consortium is um, uh, forecasting that two trains will be in, uh, two LNG trains will be in production in some years. And uh, after, capacity will increase uh, in a very significant way. Mozambique LNG is the most advanced of these two large onshore projects, Mozambique LNG and Rovuma LNG. But there was a small problem uh, with political risk. In April 2021, uh, the consortium led by Total Energy decided to uh, declare force majeure and to stop the construction, the development of this project due to um, terrorist attacks, non, uh, not on the LNG site itself, but on the city of Palma in the Cabo Delgado province in the north of Mozambique, not far from this LNG uh, site. Um, so it was in April 2021. We are in November 2023. Work has not yet resumed. Um, work should resume by the end of this year or during the first months of 2024. Uh, this um, trouble um, with this attack by jihadist groups, some of them linked to the Islamic State or Daesh, uh, these attacks were um, reduced by the intervention of foreign troops, especially from Rwanda, uh, in assistance to the Mozambique armed forces. Um, so you have the other, the, on the slide, the consortium for Mozambique LNG with Total Energy uh, being the operator. The operator in oil and gas terms is the company which, within a consortium, will conduct the technical operations on behalf of the consortium. So it has a specific responsibility. Um, the other future large project onshore, Rovuma LNG, um, investment cost estimated at a little more than 22 billion US dollars, phase one only. It's not the total cost of the project. Start up perhaps around 2028 with a question marks. Um, these uh, figures are not photographs because the project is not, uh, is not online. Uh, these are artist views of what will Rovuma LNG be, and here have uh, the LNG tankers, of course, to, to load the LNG. Um, so uh, just perhaps one word yet about Mozambique. With these three coming LNG projects, during this decade, uh, Mozambique has the potential to become the fourth largest LNG exporter in the world, behind, of course, Qatar, Australia, and the US, which are the three largest producers and exporters. And it will be difficult to catch up with uh, these uh, three, but Mozambique could be number four 
not tomorrow, but uh, by the end of this decade. So, of course, it's a very important development. Second, Tanzania. Uh, gas discoveries offshore on two different blocks, uh, three different blocks, in fact, held by two different consortia. Um, one consortia is uh, led by uh, Equinor, which is a Nor Norwegian oil company and, uh, uh, and associated with ExxonMobil, and another block held by Shell. Um, the cost of this future LNG project, with all these discoveries, is estimated at about 40 billion US dollars. You will appreciate that it's a significant amount of money. You see here uh, the consortia. Um, the final investment decision, FID, has not yet been taken. Uh, it could be taken between now and 2025 for a startup probably around 2028, but during this decade. Some key points about these countries in the Mozambique Channel or around the Mozambique Channel. Um, a great number of hydrocarbon discoveries have been made in Mozambique, offshore Mozambique and offshore Tanzania, including some very large gas discoveries. Gas will be mostly monetized through the export of liquefied natural gas because the national markets uh, for gas in these two countries are very small and will, unfortunately, remain very small for some time. Uh, in these projects, LNG projects, we see that uh, there is a key role for what we often call the majors, the oil majors, which means the largest private international oil companies. Please note that these companies are Western companies which means US and European companies. As you know, there is a lot of discussion about the decline of Western powers in the world and in Africa. Uh, as far as oil and gas in Africa is concerned, it's not at all the case, or perhaps not yet. But uh, um, Among these majors, five of them are particularly important. ENI of Italy, Total Energy, Shell, ExxonMobil, of course, of the US, the largest private oil company in the world, and Equinor of Norway. Um, Asia is very present in this part of the world as far as gas is concerned, for an obvious reason. The key markets for LNG from Mozambique and from Tanzania will be in Asia. So you have, in fact, one, two, three, seven countries, Asian countries, which are present in this LNG project through their companies. India is the leading, has the leading role. And you see the six other countries, Japan, South Korea, China, the PRC, of course, Indonesia, Singapore, and Thailand. And these seven Asian countries are present in these LNG projects thanks to nine companies, nine oil and gas companies from these Asian countries, with three companies from India. So you know them, of course, ONGC Videsh, Indian Oil Limited and Bharat Petroleum. And apart from these three Indian companies, we have CNPC of China, Mitsui Japan, obviously, Kogas, South Korea, Medco Energy of Indonesia, uh, PTTEP from Thailand, and Pavilion Energy, which is a subsidiary of the Singapore uh, Wealth Fund Temasek. So a great presence for India. We obviously have in this part of the world a certain degree of political risk. Um, you have the question of the shattered islands some small islands with no permanent population uh, owned by France 
and claimed by some other African countries, some African countries, especially, but not only Madagascar. Um, you do not have a conflict. It's not a high-level tension. Um, it's a territorial issue. It's not linked to gas, of course. But the discovery of uh, large reserves of gas in this region could heighten this type of territorial tensions. But of course, the key issue uh, is about possible jihadist attacks in the north of Mozambique. We saw that uh, it led, uh, two years ago, to the uh, declaration of force majeure as far as the Mozambique LNG. One thing is sure, as far as I am concerned, these real, especially as Mozambique is concerned, political tensions will not prevent this gas LNG projects from being developed um, and gas from being produced and exported to world markets. Because much is at stake for, of course, the Mozambique state, for the companies concerned, and for the countries which will import this LNG from this part of the world. Um, more generally speaking, to conclude, uh, I go back to Africa, uh, to the African continent. Um, Africa has an important oil and gas potential, which is underexplored and underexploited. Um, there is a simple proof for this. In the coming years, uh, a great part of the new producing countries of oil and gas and exporting countries will be African countries. We have um, growing world oil and gas demand. We have a lot of talk about uh, peak oil. Uh, it will happen one day, but not today, not tomorrow, not the day after. The world will go on, especially developing and emerging countries, to consume more oil and gas in the coming years. And of course, the war in Ukraine, which means that European countries must find oil and gas in other places than Russia, which was their main supplier uh, until 2021. So all these elements mean that several African countries, which are today oil and gas producers, or which will become oil and gas producers during this decade, have very significant trump cards in their game. But as you know well, it's not enough to have a strong game. You must play your cards in a very smart way. So it's up to these countries to do what they can do, but it would be another story. And thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much.